We're going to take a nostalgic trip down memory lane. We're going back to 1967 and Expo 67. What a wonderful exhibit that was. And uh, one of my favorite pavilions there was the Polymer Corporation's pavilion. And believe it or not, that actually had an impact on my career. Rubber. That's what the Polymer Corporation was demonstrating. It had been established in 1942 as a crown corporation to manufacture synthetic rubber. Rubber was greatly needed during the war, uh, obviously for tires, gaskets, etc. And natural rubber comes from a tree and uh, there wasn't a sufficient supply of it. The Germans in the 1930s already had been producing synthetic rubber and Canada got into it. So 1942, the Polymer Corporation was established. And indeed, they did manage to make a significant amount of synthetic rubber. Now, I'm interested in rubber for various reasons. Rubber, of course, can be made into balls. It could be made into all kinds of interesting items. And of course, for me, one of the main areas of interest is the good old fashioned rubber ducky. And this guy is a real rubber ducky, not some polyvinyl chloride imposter. But it is the science of rubber that really fascinates me. Have you ever wondered what happens when you take an elastic and you stretch it? What is going on inside? Well, rubber is a polymer meaning that it's made up of small units linked together into a giant molecule. And you know that I like to use analogies. So here's one. Let's uh, say that this is a long rubber molecule and it's actually made of little units called isoprene, so we call it polyisoprene. And uh, the rubber molecules are coiled together and you have a whole bunch of them, very much uh, like, oh, I think an analogy would be sort of coiled spaghetti on your, you know, on your plate. Now, when the rubber stretches, what we are really doing is stretching out the molecules. So we apply some force and this is what we do. The molecules begin to line up. But nature doesn't like that. Nature doesn't like organization. It likes disorganization. Uh, entropy is the term that we use, uh, which is a concept of how organized materials are. And we like to say that nature tends to increase entropy, that it goes towards randomness. So those molecules, once they are stretched out, want to fall back into their disorganized state. That's why rubber stretches and that's why it is elastic and bounces back to its original shape. But of course, the extent to which we can stretch it, the ease with which you can stretch it, depends on the specific molecular structure. Now, I said that natural rubber is made of little units of isoprene joined together. But you can fool around with this, and you can have different kinds of molecules lined up, and they can also make different kind of rubber. So, for example, again, back to my analogy, here would be another rubber molecule, but it is made up of different monomers. And the way that these would stick together would be different. So there would be a different strength needed to stretch these because, of course, the fundamental molecular structure is different. All right. Now that brings us back to the Polymer Corporation. Everyone who visited their pavilion walked away with a gift. And I still have mine. Let me tell you, to me, this is a really important relic. You got three balls, and they all looked the same. But the fact is that they were made of different kinds of rubber. That is, the individual units that made up the polymer were different. And that affects the way that it bounces. So here's one. You can see it bounces pretty well. This one still bounces. And this one doesn't bounce at all. Now just think for a moment. When the ball bounces, what's happening? It's contacting the surface, and basically it is stretching. And the degree to which it bounces back will determine how that ball bounces. And this really intrigued me. And it was one of the reasons that chemistry fascinated me 
and why I got into the field of chemistry and chemical education. And now you can understand why I appreciate these balls. And to this day, on occasion, I still like to play with my balls that I got from the Polymer Corporation way back then in 1967.